Hello everyone, my name is Kodamore and welcome to episode 21 of creating a space shooter with Godot. So we have our base enemy class, let's create our first enemy. Now this enemy already contains the code for moving our enemies at a certain vertical speed and the enemy's health and make sure it can get hits by and make sure that it can be hit by a bullet and everything. So we're going to go up to scene and we're going to create a new inherited scene. This will then ask you what scene you want to base this new scene off of. We're going to base it off of our enemy scene because we want every enemy to have the functionality of this enemy scene, the health, the vertical speed, all of that. So we'll click that and click open and this will create a new scene and you'll see that it's already pre-populated with all of the nodes in our normal enemy. So I'm going to rename this and I'm going to be making a fast enemy today. This is going to be an enemy that does not shoot it's just going to zip down the screen straight and it's going to try to intimidate and hit the player. So I've named it Fast Enemy. You'll see it's still unsaved. We're not on that normal enemy scene anymore. We just have the same nodes. And I'll save this scene in my enemy folder as FastEnemy.tScene. Now you'll notice that the nodes underneath here in our Fast Enemy are kind of grayed out. And you'll also notice we actually can't delete them or do anything to these nodes. And that's because our fast enemy inherits from the enemy scene. So it is always going to have everything that the enemy scene has. That's why it doesn't let us modify those. But we can still add things to the scene and change what we want this fast enemy to look like and be. So I actually want my fast enemy to be my spaceship image here. Let me just remove my collision shape and visibility notifier by clicking that, or hide them rather, just so we don't see it. So I do actually want it to be this image, oddly enough, it's our placeholder image, this little UFO saucer, but I do want it to be a little bit smaller, so I'm actually going to go to transform, and I'm going to scale it to be only 70% of its original size, just so it's a bit smaller. I'm also going to go ahead into the collision shape now, and I'm going to make that visible again, and I'm going to change that to make sure that it fits over my UFO perfectly, and the visibility notifier we can leave it, but we can also just shrink it a little bit to just cover the entirety of our fast enemy. So, so far, nothing is different. But you'll notice if we click the fast enemy, we have access to change the vertical speed and health of it. So I'm actually going to make the health of my fast enemy, like, I don't know, 20 health, and we'll make it go fairly fast. So we'll try, we'll try a speed of 50 for right now, and we'll save that. And if we go to our gameplay scene, and we drag in an instance of our fast enemy, into the scene, remember not our normal entity, but our fast enemy here, and I'll just move it over a bit, we should see everything working as it was yesterday. Yep, we have a little bit smaller of a UFO saucer here going down the screen. So I'll go back to my fast enemy. I want it to be moving a little faster. I'll change the speed to maybe 100. We'll see how that looks in a bit. But I also kind of want my image, my sprite, to be rotating. So not every enemy is going to be rotating, so we can't put it in the enemy.gd script. It just wouldn't make sense for every enemy to have that functionality. We could. There's nothing wrong with that. So let's make a script specific for our fast enemy. You'll notice in the fast enemy, we still have a script attached, and if we click it, it takes us to our enemy.gd script, but we can change that. I'll click the fast enemy, and I'll click this script icon with the X to remove the script from it, and instead we're going to click that same icon with the plus now and attach a new script to the fast enemy. I'll call it fastenemy.gd and we'll create it. And here's the difference. Even though our fast enemy is an area 2D and that's why our script extends area 2D, we actually want to extend our enemy script itself because we want all of this functionality, the health, the damage, the movement, and it, this enemy script already extends area 2D, which is what we are. So in order to do that, we have to give our enemy script, enemy.gd, a class name. So at the top, we'll simply type class underscore name, and then you can type a name to give this class, this enemy script, a name. I'm going to call it enemy, of course. Now if you go to your fast enemy script that we just created, instead of extending area 2D, we will extend our enemy class that we just named. So everything is the same now. As long as you typed extends enemy there, if we go back to your fast enemy, you're still going to have your vertical speed and health variables. They were reset because we reset the script, so I'm going to change that back to 120 for health. But now we have a custom fast enemy script here. So I'm going to create 
So I'm going to create a variable here, export var, for how fast I want my enemy to rotate. So I'll call it rotation rate. And we'll set that equal to something like, I don't know, we'll try 20 degrees per second. We'll just try that. And of course, in order to rotate the enemy, we need to do something in our process function. And what we'll do is we'll simply call the rotate function, which is going to take in the amount we want to rotate. So we'll do rotation rate times delta. Now this is actually going to be incorrect. And I'll show you why. Before I explain that though, notice how we created another variable, rotation rate, exported from this script. If we click on our fast enemy, we now have access to the vertical speed and health from the enemy script and our rotation rate from the new fast enemy script we created. And that fast enemy that we dropped into our gameplay scene also has those now, of course. So if we try running the game right now, you'll notice that my ship is spinning way faster than 20 degrees per second. So why is that happening? Well, if you go into the fast enemy script and we go into this rotate function, if you hold control and click it, it'll take you to the documentation, you'll notice that this rotate function takes the amount of degrees we want to rotate in radians, not normal degrees. So the fast enemy script, we simply have to convert the rotation rate into radians. And you use a function called deg2rad to do that. That stands for degrees to radians. That'll convert our 20 degrees to the radian value, and then we still multiply by delta to get it per second. Now if we run the game, you'll notice my ship is spinning much slower actually at 20 degrees per second. I'm actually going to make my fast enemies rotate faster. I kind of like it to go really fast. We'll try 50 degrees per second. And we'll leave the settings as it is currently for the fast enemy. Now we're missing one key thing. This enemy can't shoot, so when it hits the player, it should damage the player, just like the meteor does when I hit the meteor. But it currently does not do that. Now that is functionality that we want every enemy in our game to have. Instead of adding that code to damage the player in our fast enemy script, we will add that code to the base enemy script, the base enemy scene here. That way every enemy has the ability to do that. And luckily we've already done this in the meteor. So we'll go to the meteor script and essentially take a look at the code that we did. So we have this variable player on in area, which remember, if the player enters our area, we set it. If the player leaves the area of the meteor, then we unset it. We're going to do the exact same thing. So if you go to your enemy scene and click on the enemy area 2D, we'll go to the node, signals, we'll attach to the area entered signal, and we'll attach that to the enemy script, so this root enemy node. And I'm also going to select enemy again and connect the area exited signal to our enemy script. So now we have these two new functions here. And of course, we're going to need that variable, player in area, which is going to be an instance of our player. And we'll set that equal to null to begin with. And now, whenever an area enters this enemy's area, whenever something is overlapping it, we'll say if area is player, then we'll set our player in area variable equal to that area. And similarly, when something exits this enemy's area, we'll say if that area was a player, if area is player, then player in area equals null. It's no longer in our area. The exact same code as the meteor. That's all I'm doing right here. So I'm looking at my meteor script, and it looks like the last thing we have to do is add something to our process function here to damage the player as long as player in area is not null, as long as it's in the area. So I'm actually just going to copy this if statement from the meteor into the enemy.gd script. We don't have a process function set up, so I'll create func underscore process and paste that code here. So once the player has entered this enemy's area, but it has not exited, player in area will not be null, and therefore it'll keep trying to damage it for as long as the player is overlapping it. So immediately, since we did this in the enemy script, our fast enemy will have that functionality because we extend the enemy script. So let's run the game and try it. Look at that. It appears to work just fine. Now, there is something a little strange going on here. Notice how our enemy script has the process function, which does the rotation of our fast enemy, but now our enemy also has a process function, which does the damaging. So why are both process functions being called? If you come from a background like Java, you would expect this process function in our fast enemy class to sort of override the enemy's process function, unless we explicitly call 
the parent classes, this enemy classes, process function? The simple answer to that is Godot actually just runs both those process functions for us, and therefore we get both of that functionality. And I'm just mentioning that for those people who kind of thought that was a little strange, because, you know, in my mind when I first started with Godot, since this process function is doing the rotation, but I still want to call my base enemy classes process function, I was doing this. I was calling dot process passing in delta. This is the syntax for calling your parent classes, your parent scripts function, by the way, just the dot. And this was actually running the enemy's process function twice because I was explicitly calling it. So you don't actually have to do that in Godot for the process function. They'll just both automatically run. Just something I thought I'd point out to people. So anyways, now we have our cool little saucer there in our scene that is able to rotate just for a cool visual effect. We can shoot it and it'll damage us when we hit it and keep trying to damage us as long as the player's shield is not on, just like the meteor. I hope you all enjoyed and thank you all so much for watching.